Well, the history of Formula One is quite interesting. We are well known all over the world. Formula One is a trademark, but not only from the economical side, but also from the sporting side. It was quite exciting how everything developed during the years. Coming to the drivers, it was Jochen Rindt, it was uh, Jackie Stewart, Chuck Hicks, Clay Ragazzoni, Niki Lauda, Emerson Fittipaldi. Then in the 80s, Nelson uh, Piquet, Ayrton Senna, Nigel Menzel. Then later, the area with uh, Michael Schumacher, with Mika Hekinen, with uh, Fernando Alonso, Hamilton, Vettel, you know, these are drivers uh, people always will have in mind. They all wrote and are writing history in Formula One, yeah? And from the technology side, you know, Formula One is the peak of uh, motorsports. Uh, fascinating was, uh, for example, the wing car, then the active suspension. And nowadays uh, we have a fantastic power unit uh, in our cars with two energy recovery systems, which is an important step for the car technology in the future. My best memories of uh, Formula One is um, thinking back when Ralf Schumacher won the first Grand Prix in Imola with uh, Williams BMW. It was quite important in those days because I was very close working together uh, with Ralf, although when he won the race uh, I was at BMW. And then later, of course, when Sebastian Vettel won in 2008 with the Toro Rosso, uh, the Italian Grand Prix of Monza. The worst moments were, um, of course, Imola, when uh, Ayrton Senna and Roland Batzenberger crashed and uh, died, because Roland Ratzenberger was a close friend of mine and I uh, was really shocked about this. I would say that uh, these were the worst moments. You know, it started everything at the end of 2005 when Dietrich Mateschitz and Red Bull decided to buy the Minardi team, which was bankrupt in those days. Dietrich Mateschitz said, okay, I have now a second team. The philosophy of this team is first to have a close relationship on the technical side with Red Bull technology and for second, to educate young drivers from the Red Bull driver pool. This is how we started, which meant at the beginning we had cars, parts from Red Bull technology and uh, this worked quite successful, maybe too successful because in 2008 when we won the race in Monza, afterwards the, our competitors and the FIA decided to change the regulation and uh, we had to build up an infrastructure for designing and fabricating a car in-house. Now, I must say that um, we have built up this infrastructure. We have reached quite a good level. Uh, we are one of the midfield teams and um, with the budget cap and with the new regulation, I think that the team will be able in future even to close the gap to the teams ahead. And therefore I'm very optimistic regarding the future of Alpha Tauri. I thought many times about this, yeah. Would, uh, for example, Jean-Manuel Fangio with a present car being as fast as uh, he was in the 50s, knowing a lot of drivers. My theory is that Jean-Manuel Fangio, if he would be now 20, uh, would be nowadays in a current car as fast as he was in those days. Why? Because he simply has the ability, the talent to drive a racing car on the limit. Whether this car is now 
50 years old, or whether it's a current car, I don't see a difference in there. Once more, because he has the ability, the talent to drive a car absolutely on the limit. And uh, therefore, I don't think that there would be a difference from the drivers uh, beforehand to nowadays. I hope that uh, Formula One and the partners will find a way to be on the safe side from the environment, not to produce any more carbon dioxide and to come up with a power unit which is driven by a synthetic fuel, then cars will become faster. That's the nature of Formula One. Drivers will be even better educated because also there you will see the development. Formula One will also be in 20 years the pinnacle of motorsport. Hopefully we'll have as many fans or even more as nowadays and will stay a global player.